Item 4 on the order paper is the adjournment. The question is that the Assembly do, not, do now adjourn, and in conjunction with the Business Committee, I have given leave to Gary Middleton to raise the matter of funding for the Crisis Intervention Service in his constituency. The proposer of the topic will have 15 minutes, and I call Gary Middleton. Thank you, Mr Speaker. Members will be glad to know I do not intend to take the full uh, 15 minutes. Um, it is timely that we can discuss this adjournment uh, motion following on from the previous motion that we have just had, and it ties in very nicely. Uh, five years ago, Mr Speaker, I made my maiden speech in this chamber on the issue of suicide prevention within my own constituency. Uh, we're back here this evening uh, debating the issue of the Crisis Intervention Service and the need for long-term funding. A lot has changed in this past five years, but unfortunately, in many cases, that hasn't been for the better. My constituency in FOIL continues to see some of the highest rates of self-harm with elevated numbers of individuals engaging in suicide, suicidal behaviour at the bridges and river. Statistics point to an increase of incidents. If we look at 2016, there were 309 incidents. Uh, 2018, 898 incidents. These incidents involve real people, human beings within our constituency. They're not just statistics. Recent figures will point to a similar shocking trend. Whilst there are many great organisations and charities out there providing vital services, these devastating figures make the case for the need to do things differently. Far too many lives have been lost and families devastated. One life lost is one too many. In 2019, the Crisis Intervention Service was developed. The service was developed to complement the Western Trust's 24-hour crisis response service at Alton Galvin. It was developed to help address the high rates of suicidal behaviour in the Western Trust area, which is among the highest in Northern Ireland. This service was initially run as a pilot scheme. However, this has now been extended on several occasions for a few months at a time. I do welcome the latest extension of the service until March 2021. And I do thank the Minister for listening to the concerns of us all in the North West. It is, however, unacceptable that a fight has to be put up time and time again to have this service funded at a basic level. The Crisis Intervention Service in Londonderry, its employees, its volunteers, and most significantly, the service users deserve better than that. Last-minute funding decisions add further to the stress and the concern of those involved. The service was due to end in just two weeks' time. The funding announcement and extension was announced just last week. This causes serious issues for job retention of the skilled professionals involved in the service, and it also causes undue pressure on those having to work on the front line helping our most, most vulnerable. Again, the extension is very welcome. However, we must look at a long-term sustainable funding model going forward. The benefits of the Crisis Intervention Service is well evidenced in the evaluation report conducted by the Ulster University. One service user, and I, and I quote what this service user said, I don't know what would have happened if the Crisis Intervention Service hadn't have been there for me, because all I say, I just wanted to jump in the river. You never know an impulse. I've been dealt a bad hand in so many ways, and it's time to cash in my chips. That's the way I look at it, and that's how I justify it to myself. This service is a vital lifeline to so many people in our city. The evaluation report recommended that the service should be maintained, and I think that is in no doubt. The opening hours and the publicity procedures need to be reviewed. We know that the service operates on a Thursday at 8pm until a Sunday uh, at 8am, at and we know that that isn't sufficient because you know, the, the issues that many of those face don't stop or start at those times. They, they exist all of the time, and there should be a service to reflect that. And the evaluation also referenced that progress was needed on partnership among referral agencies. Mr Speaker, I pay tribute to many organisations within my constituency, Foil Search and Rescue and the PSNI and many others who do an incredible job at helping those at need. There are many other recommendations in the evaluation report which are relevant, but they all point to the fact 
that there needs to be a crisis intervention service in the area. There is also an economic response conducted by Professor Siobhan O'Neill and Dr Adele Ennis. It clearly makes the economic case for the service, the savings that the service has to other, um, other agencies, emergency departments uh, and the emergency services. However, this argument should not be an economic one. As I've said before, one life lost is one too many. The value of life is precious. When announcing the three-month extension in June, the Minister stated, the service has shown positive benefits for those clients who are in crisis, and I sincerely hope that funding is secured to enable the service to continue. It is incumbent on the Council to commission the service to secure a sustainable funding model going forward. I encourage all stakeholders to use this additional period as an opportunity to have those conversations and engage extensively with Extern to identify lasting funding options. I believe, and those who represent the FOIL constituency at all levels believe, that the Department for Health should be funding this vital service. We all agree on the significance of the Protect Life 2 strategy, yet time and time again this service is on life support. We don't need further reports and strategies. We need funding and we need support. The Minister had said that he encourages all stakeholders to use the additional period as an opportunity to have those conversations and engage to identify lasting funding options. However, it has been disappointing that the Western Trust and the PHA have not been engaging with the Crisis Intervention Steering Group. I would be grateful if the Minister would ensure that there is representation at these steering group meetings. The Department for Health should give a view on the evaluation report and its findings. As we go forward, the challenges within our society are becoming greater. Experts have warned that the COVID-19 pandemic and any economic consequences or job losses may lead to an increase in suicidal behaviour and death by suicide. Initial data based on police records of incidents of the River Foyle shows an increase um, in suicide behaviour. This may be seen as the tip of the iceberg since the majority of suicides occur in the person's home. People are avoiding presenting themselves to emergency departments at this time, which means that people in suicidal despair would particularly benefit from having an additional alternative place of support to go at the current time. As we continue to live with the virus and face the possibility of second waves, the service should be maintained as an essential component of the efforts to reduce the mental health impact. I do want to say, uh, Mr Speaker, I appreciate that the Minister has championed mental health services, so this is not a criticism of the Minister, because I know that the Minister has so much uh, on his plate, and we do support him in that role. Uh, and we do wish him well, and we will uh, support him in whatever efforts need to be made, whether it be a, a bid to the executive as a whole or whatever needs to be done. But I would plea that we're not standing here again in March 2021 making the same arguments for the same service, uh, which, which uh, we shouldn't have to make the case for. So I would urge uh, the Minister to, to take on board uh, these comments, and I just uh, thank him for attending uh, this debate here today. Uh, and I would urge everyone to, to please uh, make their views known. Thank you, Mr Speaker. Thank you. And I call Martina Anderson. Uh, can call and I want to thank the member, Gary Milton, for bringing this adjournment debate today. Because as we know, from, 20, uh, from 1998 to 2018, 5,087 people have taken their lives uh, in the North. And the member knows that, and the minister knows that. This means that more people have died uh, throughout those years that have died during the 40 years in the conflict. And like the rest of the North, Derry has endured a mental health and suicide epidemic. This scourge has ravaged the, the people of Derry. It shakes our communities to the core and it tears families apart. And yet a key life-saving service like the Community Crisis Intervention Service limps on month after month receiving breadcrumbs from the Department of Health's table. When the funding, whilst the funding is welcome, the service uh, got just enough money in June to last until the end of this month, and is now getting just enough money to survive until next March. No service can function properly with such financial uncertainty. I cannot recount the number of stories I have read or heard over the years where the foil bridge in Derry 
a passing jogger, motorist, local taxi driver, have stopped to bring a vulnerable person standing physically and mentally on the brink back to safety. Unfortunately, I also know stories of those who have jumped, of those whose lives have become so dark, who can see no glimmer of hope, who want nothing more than to end their suffering by jumping into the inky abyss below. Bodies missing for days. Foil Search and Rescue, a fantastic organisation in Derry, scouring the river in search for a body, while desperate families organise search parties along the river bank to bring their mummy, daddy, brother, sister, aunt, uncle, cousin, or their friend home. Those people who have taken their lives are not numbers or statistics. They were forces crying out for help, and it is our duty, especially your duty now, Minister, to ensure that their cries do not fall on deaf ears. That is why Derry needs a community crisis intervention service. Many young people, many people, particularly young men, who have not experienced the peace dividend of a bright and new beginning, have encountered the same lack of educational attainment, the same lack of employment prospects, and the same substance abuse that has plagued our community and society for over 20 years. It is those who are on the brink that the Community Crisis Intervention Service helps. This service literally saves lives. Intervening and supporting those who suffer alone, providing timely, non-clinical and community responses to those in crisis, giving advice for those trying to cope with stress, anxiety and depression. The level of suicide rates that Derry experiences is undoubtedly compounded by poverty, social deprivation and a lack of opportunity. Suicide rates are higher in those areas that are most deprived. And while Derry has come a long, long way over the last 20 years, we know that we have much further to travel. We need to ensure financial resources are allocated to Derry City and District based on objective need. Part of that is ensuring the continued and long-term funding of the Community Crisis Intervention Service way beyond March 2021, because we have never needed a Community Crisis Intervention Service more. So, Minister, I appeal to you this evening. Do not allow a key service to be stripped away from Derry. Commit to the long-term investment of the Community Crisis Intervention Centre. And please, do the decent thing, the thing that I believe I know you want to do, and ensure that your department commits to this and that you're able to send that signal out to the people of Derry this evening. Go, Romila Mayagov, thank you. Thank you, and I call it Mark Durkin. Firstly, I'd like to start also by thanking Gary Middleton for tabling this motion today. As the Minister will hear this afternoon, as the Minister already knows, there is unanimous and strong political support for Derry's Community Crisis Intervention Service, and with very good reason. Often in this chamber, more so than outside in the real world, we see division or hear division over the daftest of issues and, and, and sometimes over fundamental political ideology. But this issue, suicide prevention, saving lives, is something that should unite us all and something that does unite us all. This critical life-saving service is something that our city, Derry, Londonderry, whatever you want to call it, I, I just call it home, was crying out for. It was, and it is, very badly needed. The Council led the way. They had to drag the Western Trust and the Department of Health to the table. We even had to get a significant contribution from Foil Search and Rescue, a tremendous local charity 
to make ends meet. It was only after my intervention, I have to say, identifying underspend in the Belfast de-escalation service and getting it redirected to Derry that Foyle Search and Rescue could be reimbursed their £20,000, which they can now use, or have now used, doing what they do best, saving lives and helping families in their darkest hours. The service has been a success. Do not just take my word for it. The Minister will have read the evaluation. It has saved lives. And like Gary, I have heard directly from people who say they would not be here today had it not been for that crisis intervention service. It has been a success despite uncertainty over its future, staff being uncertain about their futures and lurching from one funding crisis to another. This is not the way to run any service, but it is definitely not the way to run a service of this nature. The dark cloud or the spectre of closure hanging over it is not just bad for the morale and retention of the diligent, dedicated staff. It is bad for the collective mental well-being of our city. I want to take this opportunity to place on record my appreciation and respect for those extern staff today. Derry City and Straban District Council did not embark on this pilot or on this project for the crack. The evaluation makes for stark, sore reading. The rates of suicide and self-harm in the North West are shocking. They are scandalous, and it is just so sad. My thoughts are with all those families that have been devastated by suicide and with those individuals out there who battle with demons every day. I commend the Council on their efforts to get this up and running. They had to do it because no one else was going to do it. But now I can't help but feel this project is suffering because it was Council-led, that someone somewhere in the Department of Health is saying, that wasn't my idea, so I don't like it. If that is the case, then tell us what you don't like. Help support and shape the service. Don't starve it. We need to protect life, not egos. I want to thank all of those involved in the gruelling work of suicide prevention, both in the statutory and community sector. I know many of the individuals in the Trust and the Department who work flat out round the clock under huge constraints and under huge stress to tackle ever-increasing and ever-more complex cases. But there is clearly a systemic issue. It is evident still in terms of the mental health budget and in how difficult individuals find it to access the support they need when they need it. But other community-based initiatives should be embraced, not feared and rejected. It is about complementarity, not competition. My uh, recent proposal for a North West Suicide Prevention Task Force has been dismissed as it would undermine work currently being done. I do not want to undermine it. I want to underline it, because the sad reality is that too many people out there honestly believe that nothing is being done. The member this, draws remarks to the close. This project clearly falls under the remit of the Department of Health, and I will obviously support and have called for funding uh, from other sources. While it is clearly Minister Swan's responsibility to lead on this, the Executive does have a responsibility as well. We have had ministers tripping over themselves to give their commitment or talk about their commitment to mental health. Talk is cheap, Kyungkolia. Life is precious. Saving lives is precious. And the retention of the long term funding of this project is good value for money. It needs done, Minister. Please do it. Thank you. And it was remiss of me not to advise members that they have five minutes. Thank you. I call Karen Mullen. I also want to thank Gary Muddleton for bringing forward today's adjournment debate on Derry's crisis intervention service, particularly following on from this afternoon's motion. I also want to thank the Minister for being here for both today. 
Cancola, across the three parties here that represent the people of Foil, this is certainly one issue that unites us. The Minister and his department has received many pieces of correspondence and questions from us and others across our city. Minister, we are all aware of the massive pressures on your department in relation to the COVID pandemic and, in fact, the real pressures that were there before COVID. But I have to say it's very disappointing when I and others have written to you to meet and discuss the crisis intervention in Derry and that could not be accommodated. It is also disappointing to have questions not answered by their deadline and to read in the newspapers of additional funding without any detail being provided to any of us MLAs here tonight. Like my colleague across the, the chamber, I welcome the extension of the funding, but as said, this is not a way to provide vital services. Our job in this assembly and in committees is to scrutinise while working with ministers and departments to deliver first-class services for all our constituents. In the case of the crisis intervention in Derry, that has been lacking. There is a big enough crisis in my city with mental health without a crisis every six months over finding funding for this vital service. Minister, I know how much you care, and I heard your commitment here today again. And this has also been further demonstrated by the very welcome appointment of Professor Siobhan O'Neill as the interim mental health champion. And it's good to hear today from you the resources that it's attached to that office. But the people of Derry have been expecting announcements and action in relation to the future of crisis intervention and wider mental health services, given that mental health is a priority in the new decade, new approach, and across the executive. When someone reaches out for help and support, they must have access to it, and my party supports the appropriate funding of and access to crisis services. The Protect Life 2 strategy identifies the need for an out-of-hours crisis de-escalation service. The Derry model has been providing that for nearly two years as a pilot, but yet there was no budget allocation in the strategy for 2021. Earlier today, this Assembly debated a motion on the expansion of the MAT partnership across all trusts. Minister, I asked again that when reviewing the existing model, that the Dairy Crisis Intervention Pilot be part of that review and form part of the recommendations for going, for, going forward. I further asked, Minister, that you and your officials work with us and all our stakeholders as to what those services will look like for Dairy. Before I conclude, I want to pay tribute to those involved in delivering, delivering this service, like others have done tonight. Extern, Foil Search and Rescue, Council, PSNI, Western Health and Social Care Trust, and the members of the steering group, for without them, we would not have had a local service for the last two years, a service that has and is saving lives. And finally, Kian Collier, the current cost of Derry's crisis intervention service is £130,000 per year. Small change in comparison to the overall health budget, so it is more than value for money for the service and the support that it provides. Like all our here, allers here tonight, Minister, I urge that you provide long-term funding required to ensure this life-saving service continues. Thank you. And I call Colm Gilderney. Um, I welcome the opportunity to return to the important issue of the cross-cutting support needed for crisis intervention services we discussed earlier, and I would like to update members on the committee's consideration of this matter, and also to thank uh, the member for bringing this to the Assembly. At the meeting on 18 June 2020, the Committee for Health considered correspondence from Extern and the Derry and Straban District Community Policing Partnership regarding the prospective closure of the Community Crisis Intervention Service. The Committee welcomed the Minister's statement of 16 June announcing an extension of funding for the service. However, the Committee noted that this extension was short-term only and wrote to the Department to ask if any consideration has been given to longer-term funding for the service. 
The Minister advised of the further three-month funding package granted and made the case for a multi-agency funding approach, given the benefits to PSNI from the service. In addition, the Committee requested details on the planned reconfiguration of mental health crisis services, as described in Action 8.2 of the Mental Health Action Plan, including information on the time frame and any scoring system to be used in the review. We were informed that the Chief Medical Officer was leading on this and that the proposed time frame was between September and December of this year, with the caveat that the pandemic may require an extension. The Minister also advised that the review would look at the wider context of crisis support in mental health and consider all available evidence, in addition to evaluating existing services. Closely connected to ongoing challenges at EDs and the review of urgent and emergency care, the Committee understands the review will also aim to identify improvements which will reduce the number of people attending emergency departments as a result of a mental health crisis. As I said earlier, the Committee will no doubt be keeping this matter under review as part of our wider scrutiny of transformation and rebuilding services. I am uh, struck by today's debate and, and indeed the earlier debate in relation to the issue that we all know exists, whereby if someone has, if you have a broken leg, people will come across the street to talk to you and comfort you and, and offer support and advice, whereas if you have a mental health problem, they will often at times avoid discussing it, avoid raising it or whatever. But it also strikes me that the other thing about the broken leg is that you can go and get something done about that when it happens and when you're in pain. In terms of mental health services, those, those same uh, access to services at the time when you really need it do not exist, and I think until such times as we can create a network of services right across the north that deal with that, we will not be treating mental health issues in, uh, in, in the terms of parity with physical health. Gormay Agat, can I call you? Uh, thank you, Gormay Agat, and I call uh, Alan Chambers. Mr Speaker, uh, the Ulster Unionist Party has long recognised the need to develop and support new innovative approaches to helping people at a time of emotion crisis. The Community Crisis Intervention Service has undoubtedly saved lives, and it's not just its absolute emphasis of a community response, but also the fact that it is focused on working during the hours of 8pm on Thursdays to 8am on Sunday mornings, when some other support organisations may not be there for people. The service has been an immediate safety net, providing a short-term solution to an immediate crisis. That is why I was pleased that Robin Swan has not once, but twice personally intervened to secure the ongoing provision of the service. The first was in June this year, when he provided over £32,000 for a breathing space for the Council to try to reach a longer-term funding solution. At the time, it was also made clear that it would have been useful for funding discussions to also involve the other departments and the Policing and Community Safety Partnership, given the clear benefits to the services uh, for the PSNI. Regrettably, nothing came to fruition. So once again, the Minister intervened, but this time it wasn't just for three months, but for six. Whilst other departments and statutory bodies often talk a good talk, it's regrettable that none other uh, than Minister Swan were able to offer even a part contribution to the service. If other statutory bodies are serious about this service and continuing on a sustainable basis, they all need to step up to the plate. They need to dig deep into their pockets, and they need to help create a long-term funding package and a model that is available for even longer operating hours. I wish this invaluable service well going forward. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you, and I call Paula Bradshaw. Mr. Speaker. Um and thank you to the member um, for bringing this debate today. It, it is not my constituency, although as a former resident of Eglinton it was once, so I respond not as 
just as the party sp health spokesperson, but also as someone who has a nat natural sympathy for the area. My remarks will be brief, as much as the clear case for retention of the service and for placing it on long-term funding has already been made. Indeed, the clear case exists not just for retention, but extension. I so recognise that funding sources may need to be wider than just the Department of Health, but as we have heard in the earlier debate, it is essential that we do not just see money allocated to these services as spent, but rather as saved. Services such as these are classic cases of the type of early intervention which the entire process of transforming our health and social care system is all about. By allocating funding to services as, such as these in the longer term, we should recognise that by intervening early and therefore intervening effectively, uh, we can turn lives around. There is surely nothing more important than that. I have spoken to my party's councillors in the area and I would emphasise the other point that was raised in the earlier debate also, that crisis intervention should be so much more an innate part of the overall mental health service and indeed the health and social care system generally. The objective is that crisis intervention can be a fundamental part of primary care, providing a direct link for the police, the ambulance service and the fire service, rather than having to direct people to an already inevitably busy emergency department at Alton Galvin or elsewhere. This type of early intervention would see the most appropriate care provided immediately ad with adequate follow-ups within a few days and thus the most effective channel to help people in need without the need for referrals other than in the most extreme cases. So to re-emphasise two key points, the service cannot survive by having to chase after a pot of funding every few months. It needs a longer term fitting, but secondly, um, we could provide much longer term funding. It could be, become a, a true anchor for the service and for improving mental health across the whole area and thus um, potentially a model for elsewhere in this country. In closing, I wish to um, express my thanks to everyone who is involved in the service to date and to wish them well for the future. Thank you. Thank you. And I call Cara Hunter. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, uh, and I thank Gary for bringing this important uh, debate forward. Um, although I'm not a, an elected representative of FOIL, um, I have to say uh, my constituents do avail of uh, external services, so I'm delighted to be here today um, to speak on this issue. Uh, in my time serving as a Derry and Straban uh, District Council as a councillor, I was greatly impressed by the work and the commitment um, CCIS has to those uh, struggling with mental ill health. They are providing vital services to their local community, serving people from the outskirts of Straban right through to Derry City and constituents from Claudie. In the midst of a global health pandemic and as discussed in the mental health crisis debate earlier today, the need for on-the-spot mental health support is painfully apparent. We fear and have extreme concern regarding what the North West would look like without access to a service like this, a community-based programme with a listening ear available out of ours and on their doorstep. If we cannot afford to fund this life-saving service, what kind of message are we sending to the wider public? I have spoken at length with staff at CCIS. You can tell the impact that this service has had on reducing suicidal behaviour within the wider council area. I would ask and urge the Minister and other executive colleagues to please consider a long-term and ring-fenced funding strategy for this critical suicide prevention service. Thank you. And I call Jerry Carroll. Mr Speaker, um, as you know, I'm not a member of the constituency. I'm not a dairy man, but I think it's important to be here and, and speak in support of, of this service and other services like it across the north. Um, too often, services uh, like this spend too much time chasing funding when they should be doing what they're uh, uh, best at, which is supporting people with mental health uh, issues. And people have expressed to me that the crisis intervention service in Derry is a vital amenity for the city and the North West, and I believe them, and I take their word for it. And, uh, it has saved lives, as people have obviously emphasised uh, here tonight. Um, and on World Suicide Prevention Day, the Minister obviously announced another £60,000 of funding to keep the service going. Uh, until March. Of course, this funding has been broadly welcomed. Uh, it's a service nobody wants to lose in Derry. 
However, the treatment of the service uh, isn't good enough. Uh, people depending on the service can't be sure uh, it will be there the year after or the year after that. Um, workers can't be sure whether they'll have a job, uh, and no one can make long-term plans to tackle mental ill health on this uh, basis. Um, like my constituency, uh, Mr. Speaker, Derry in the North West suffers disproportionately from a legacy of deprivation and disinvestment, and the implementation of Tory welfare reforms has had a vicious negative impact on the most vulnerable and low pay workers uh, in all communities there. Uh, absolute poverty has increased, and these factors drive a tremendous mental health challenge for people in Derry and uh, beyond. For these reasons, Mr. Speaker, by not sourcing core funding uh, for the crisis intervention service, I believe the executive is sending the wrong message to Derry and the North West. And um, a service that I am more familiar with, uh, Compass Counselling, um, uh, based in the Shankill, also required council uh, intervention to save a fundamental and important mental health service as well. It's a pattern that happens uh, too often. Um, uh, Mr. Speaker. Uh, the new decade, new approach, as we have heard already, makes a, a series of commitments to develop Derry in the North West. Uh, I would ask what message does it send to people uh, in Derry and in the North West that they are forced to organise an all out effort every couple of months to keep the doors of this federal service uh, uh, open. Hundreds of millions of pounds wasted on the likes of RHI, but funding for 30,000 or 60,000 uh, for the crisis intervention service requires the uh, big effort and investment uh, and action by the Derry and Strabane Council and others to demand it. For me, this sends out the wrong message, and the people in Derry will tell you that. They have told me that uh, already prior to this debate. Um, they will tell you that nothing has changed. The new Stormont is the old Stormont uh, when it comes to Derry and the North West uh, promises, but little delivery. Uh, people in Derry are fed up with a half a loaf treatment, and the mental health crisis is one of the greatest challenges of the 21st century in the health pandemic, as we have heard er earlier, um, and the social economic aftershocks will make it even more uh, challenging. For this reason, Mr. Speaker, the Minister and the Executive uh, need to use this opportunity now to identify core long-term funding for the Derry Crisis Intervention Service and make a part of the Mental Health Action Plan. The job of the Executive is to help people, not abandon them, and generate cynicism and hopelessness. Derry needs a new deal, and let's send a message today that we are serious about delivering this by making a priority of establishing core funding for this essential service. Thank you. Thank you, and I call the Minister for Health, Robin Swan. Um, <coughs> uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. And can I thank Mr. Middleton for proposing this adjournment debate, which I think works well and ties in well with the debate that we've just just had in the Assembly in regards to our mental health crisis support. Um, Mr. Speaker, I think it's a testimony and a dedication to the members here tonight for for those who have attended and stayed for an adjournment debate, because I know when. When we were in other sittings and other sessions, if you got the, the local representatives from that constituency to stay, it was an achievement. So I would just like to thank all the members from across all the parties and other constituencies who have stayed tonight to join in um, this debate and support the representatives um, from FOIL uh, in this, this adjournment debate, because this debate provides us again with a welcome opportunity to discuss the funding for the Community Crisis Intervention Service in Londonderry. And I'd, I'd repeat you know, some of the commentary from, from the earlier debate, Mr Speaker, because since taking up uh, the post as Minister of Health, I've made it very clear uh, that mental health is a priority for me and, and my department. So I know Mr Durkin's phrases earlier on in regards to ego. I hope that's not directed at me or anywhere near any of my pro And I just want to, to clarify that approach, because it's not how I work, and it's definitely not how I work in regards to mental health, because Mr. Speaker, for far too long, people have struggled to access appropriate mental health services when they need them. For far too long, suicide has cast a shadow over our communities and robbed us of too many lives. So it's important to note that suicide prevention it's, it's not a single issue, and in particular, it links with with drugs, it links with alcohol and deprivation, as Mr. Carl indicated, are widely acknowledged through experience and research and best practice. Protect Life 2 um, focuses on suicide prevention as a societal, societal issue and seeks to ensure collaborative cross-departmental engagement. And I think that was referenced earlier on by, by Ms Flynn in the previous debate. 
because it addresses the risk factors for suicide and self-harm, as well as engagement across wider society. Because suicide prevention, Mr Speaker, requires work across a range of settings and services, because the combined knowledge, expertise and resources of all our departments and the differing sectors is essential to reduce the suicide rate. London Dairy's Crisis Intervention Service was commissioned, as many members have said, by Derry and Sturban District Council and is delivered solely by Extern. The service began in January 2019 and provides a timely, non-clinical community response to individuals experiencing social, emotional or situational crisis, and that has been indicated here today. This service was initially piloted for one year, uh, due to end in December 2019, and that was extended until June 2020. £27,000 of transformational slippage funding was allocated to the service in March um, 2020, and I agreed um, to provide a one-off injection of, of just over 32000 funding to Darien Straban District Council to allow a breathing space for the Council to extend the service for a further three months to the end of, of this month to try and reach a funding solution with stakeholders. That work is ongoing and is going in a positive uh, direction. I agreed last week, um, as has been referenced, um, to allocate a further £60,000 to enable the service to continue until the end of March uh, 2021, while that work is ongoing. I know the service wrote to a number of departments, but Health was the only one that responded financially to allow that piece of work. Um, to continue. Mr Speaker, a separate funding arrangement is being explored for the service thereafter by both Council and ex Extern. I felt it important to maintain the service to allow them to do that piece of work, and that is why I provided the funding until the end of March 2020, until the crisis service review work is completed, because this piece of work is included in that review, and also in context of COVID-19 and the impact that undoubtedly has on mental health. Uh, the committee chair referred to Action 8.2 and contained in the Mental Health Action Plan, and I referred again, Mr Speaker, in, in the debate earlier on about the specific steps that that involves. One of those is to consider the interactions between different crisis response services, and that such as our, our MAD teams, the Home Crisis Teams, Emergency Departments, 999, the Police Primary Care, and the Multidisciplinary Teams. So all that work is part of how we do this to make sure we serve uh, the people across Northern Ireland uh, in the best way possible. Mr Speaker, I just haven't read the evaluations. I visited the service earlier this year and talked to the people who actually delivered, and I was impressed by the work undertaken by the service to help those most in need. And I was particularly impressed by the dedication and commitment of those individuals, because this, this service is person-centred, person and we must all recognise that anyone can find themselves in need of such a service. Extern have advised me that over 475 people have received time-critical and immediate interventions since the initiative com commenced, and I have no doubt that this has saved lives. Some of these people have been brought to the service by foil search and rescue. Some have been brought by the PSNIs. Other, PSNI, others have availed of accessibility and been brought by family and friends. Service users have consistently benefited from the non-clinical approach that is taken, because often a busy hospital or emergency department environment is not helpful for someone in crisis. The therapeutic environment of the crisis intervention service is much more appropriate. The majority of clients have not required any further services directly after attending the crisis intervention service, and I think this point in particular underlies its effect of working. Whilst, all above, whilst above all the benefits of this service have been for the clients themselves, there are also significant benefits for PSNI colleagues who have a place of safety where they contact someone in crisis. The service evaluation, has, as referred to on a number of occasions, clearly shows that police officers feel that the service allows them to treat clients more effectively and allows them to carry on with other duties as they are confident the person is safe. The demands mental health crisis place 
crises place on police forces has been very clear for some time, and I therefore think there is a strong argument for the justice sector to consider contributing to funding such initiatives going forward, because reducing the devastating impact of suicide and self-harm in Northern Ireland requires, as many members have said, collaboration across all sectors of society and can only be achieved by working together across all government departments and with stakeholders from all sections of society. And that includes local councils. And on this, I would commend Derry and Straban District Council for the proactive work they have undertaken to commission this service. Members will be aware on the 19th of May I published my department's mental health action plan. Policy work on developing proposals for crisis intervention services has now been take for, taken forward through the Mental Health Action Plan. There is a specific action within that plan to develop proposals for crisis services. It is expected the review into mental health crisis services will be completed by March 2021. This will take into account the evaluation of the Derry Crisis Intervention Services, as well as similar pilots which operate in Belfast and the multi-agency triage team. Their view is expected to make recommendations for the future delivery of crisis intervention services and also enhance coordination of a range of associated programmes, including mental health crisis services, the Towards Zero Suicide programme, Lifeline and the multi-agency triage team, because decisions on future delivery of crisis services will be taken by the Department once that work is completed. I am also committed to delivering a new mental health strategy by July next year. That strategy was already needed before the pandemic, but the need for a new comprehensive strategic direction and funding plan has now never been greater. As I have said many times, Mr Speaker, mental health is one of my top priorities. I am honoured to be in this position where I can drive strategic change and improvement to mental health services and to improve the psychological well-being and mental resilience of the population. And I trust the allocation of £60,000 will allow Extern and Derry and Straban District Council to ensure service continuity and stability for the service and contribute to suicide prevention, which is vital in these challenging times for those who are most vulnerable. Mr Speaker, thank you, and I thank the member for bringing this adjournment. I thank the Minister, and uh, the Assembly is now adjourned. Thank you all. <laughs>